Every plan object placed in a document has its own customizable options. Some of these options can be pulled directly from the plant definition, and others are set by the plant tool when placing the plant. We will take a look at each of these options and how they affect the plant. These settings can be changed individually per plant instance placed in a file. We will start by modifying the settings of a plant that has already been placed. As with any object, the first place to go to modify its settings is the Object Info Palette. In order to see the settings of the plant, we first need to select a plant object. Then, in the Object Info Palette, we will see multiple options for this selected plant. We're going to come back to these options later. To begin though, let's click on the Plant Settings button to access the plant instance settings. In this dialog, we can choose a different plant definition for this plant, or edit the definition settings if we'd like. However, if we only want to adjust the options for this particular plant, we can adjust those settings individually. Under Placement Options on the left, we'll see similar settings to that of the plant definition, plus a couple of additional categories. The key thing to remember here is that any changes made under Placement Options will only affect the selected plant or plants, they will not adjust the plant definition or other plants using the same definition. So under Size, you'll see that there are options for Spread, Height, Spacing, and Hedgerows. This is very similar to the plant definition. As you can see, the values for Spread, Height, and Spacing can be set to use the same setting as the plant definition or a custom value. If the Use Plant Definition is enabled, the current value is set to that of the plant definition. If the plant definition is edited, these values are changed. The plant instance will update and reflect those changes. If a custom setting is chosen, however, the custom setting will override the plant definition. Any plants using a custom plant setting will ignore changes to the definition, so do keep that in mind. For instance, if we want to place a few instances of a single plant, but adjust the spread and height slightly to give a more natural appearance, we can set the spread and height to custom and choose different values for each instance of the plant. For spacing, there are the same plant definition and custom choices, as well as a distribution by coverage option. There is also an option to set the number of hedge rows when using the hedge mode of the plant tool. Finally, under size, we have an option to choose whether this plant will appear on our plant list. Under schedule, there are options to customize all the schedule information. We can choose to use the plant definition information just as we did with a spread and height, or set custom values. These options include scheduled size, quantity type, price code, price, and comments. Remember, any changes made here will only affect the selected plant or plants. The definition information will remain unchanged. Similarly, under Render, we can choose to use the values set in the plant definition or choose custom options for the selected plants. The last two categories, Annotation and Tag, are independent for every plant instance. These options cannot be set in the plant definition. Under Annotations, there are various options. We have Mode, which allows you to change the placement mode for the plant. Next, we have Polygon Mode. When using a placement mode that places multiple plants, a boundary, centerline, or gapped polygon can be displayed. There are both solid and dashed line options. Next up is Tick Style. A cross, dot, or X mark can be added to the plant's 2D display. The tick size and class can also be modified. Then we have Plant Rotation. The rotation of the plant can be set to horizontal, a long line, or random. Horizontal is used when plants should stay oriented similarly throughout the plan. A long line is generally used in formal hedge groupings, such as square symbols for hedges that need to align to an edge. Random will give a more natural representation, producing a hand-drawn, less cookie-cutter appearance. Then we have plant diameter and height variation. These options, just as it suggests, allow you to vary the height and diameter of a plant. The variation is based off of the current spread and height of the plant. Plants can have between a 5% and a 15% variation. The random options for rotation, diameter, and height will give the plant a little bit more of a hand-drawn appearance. 
You will want to note that this does not change the specified spread or height values. These randomized options only affect how the objects are drawn on screen. Finally, we have image size. This is the last option under annotation. This controls the size of plant images and the plant tag. We're going to talk about the plant tag options in another chapter. The final placement option we have is for tag settings. We are going to discuss plant tags and their options in detail in another chapter. However, under tag, you can adjust the tag display, class, angle, bubble, and other options. Now that we've taken a look at the various plant instance settings through the edit plant dialog, let's take a look at the settings that are available in the object info palette. Most of the settings we just saw in the plant instance settings dialog can also be adjusted directly through the object info palette. Again, with this, we do need to select a plant first. Then we'll see that we have access to the definition, annotation, render, and tag settings. Some options, such as spread and height, may be grayed out. Uh, this indicates that the plant is using a by definition value for these options. If you would like to set a custom value for these options, you'll need to click on the plant settings button first and toggle the custom options under size. So far, we've been looking at changing the settings of a plant that has already been placed. However, the plant tool can be configured to place new plants with default placement options, so we don't have to configure each plant every time it's placed. To adjust the settings of the plant tool itself, we first need to activate the tool in the site planning tool set, and then click on the plant tool preferences button. This dialog looks very similar to the plant settings dialog we were just looking at a moment ago. However, this dialog controls the placement options for the plant tool itself, and not for a particular plant. Any changes made in the plant tool preferences will affect every plant placed with the tool from this point on. Typically, you will leave the size and schedule options set to use the plant definition options for the plant tool. This way, all plants are placed with those options by default. It is more common to choose specific render, annotation, and tag settings in the plant tool preferences than it is to adjust spread and height values. Now, even though render settings can be set through the plant definition, it's typical that we may want a specific massing or shadow effect per project, and we'd want to set that in the tool itself versus through the plant definition. Annotation and tag options, on the other hand, cannot be set in the plant definition at all. They must be set per plant instance. Setting up the annotation and tag settings in the plant tool preferences will apply these settings to all placed plants. Adjusting these settings before placing plants is a good idea, as this will give you a consistent look throughout the file without having to adjust every plant after it's placed. As we've seen, with all of these various plant options, we can customize every single plant instance for our needs. From the size and schedule information to render, annotation, and tag display. This can be done individually per plant by using the plant settings button in the object info palette, as well as adjusting the plant tool preferences directly to set defaults for every plant placed in our document.